This video is going to be called um, Destroy Me or Destroy Christianity in the Name of Jesus. Uh, I think that's uh, what's behind these um, documentaries. Uh, I'm going to be looking at a documentary I'm, I, I discovered while looking for something to watch on BBC iPlayer. Um, it's very... It, I didn't watch it all, it's quite vexing and like most things on mainstream television can be quite vexing to watch. Um, I don't watch much telly. Um, I like documentaries. Um, usually I, I seek, seek out the independent documentaries but occasionally there's some good, good documentaries on TV. I discovered this, uh, there's two documentaries that that, that I flagged up. One was on uh, Harry Potter, uh, but this is not about Harry Potter. And the other was this one, Heal Me in the Name of Jesus. And the disgusting behaviour inside these um, these churches, these uh, so-called churches in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to cover in defence of the gospel and in defence of, of the Lord and his gospel and his and his word and his heart and mind on 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 this sort of behaviour in his name. Uh, there's so many things I'm gonna flag out. I've taken some still shots. Uh there's about twelve that I will quickly skip through. I'm not going to play the documentary. Uh, it's not a bad documentary. This this lady here, Emily, Emily Yates, it has suffered with multiple cirrhosis, I believe, since a child. So she's born and grew up in a wheelchair. And she... Now, just want to... Uh, just some considerations that I'd like to make about presentations of creativity. In this documentary is put together with a kind of a bi it, it it comes across as being unbiased, objective, but because it's not um, in the bias of a believer's point of view, it the people who make this doc documentary a have no testimony of Jesus they don't know Jesus therefore they don't recognize what is um, biblical what is a, um, affirmed in the Bible as a look as a witness as, as the truth of what Christianity is it's preserved and no matter how unbelievers interpret that the Bible interprets itself, it's a true witness and if it's lined up wrong it won't be true but if it's lined up correctly it's infallible but you need the witness of Jesus to know it's infallible because you need to know that the author is faithful and true so like making this documentary, uh, this brief little, my own little documentary in uh, defence of the gospel and to highlight this documentary which is framed in a, now I'll use the word frame, if you put a lens onto a camera, you, if you want a wide angled shot of your film you'd put a wide angled lens on, if you want a, um, a zoom to focus in you'd have a lot like a zoom or a telephoto lens so it depends what lens you put on uh, has an effect on the image that's uh, recorded and projected so, and that's the same with the intention behind the making of these films now this a this lady just peers out of on telly uh, on the mainstream and doesn't give you any of her background, how she was approached to do this. It's just uh, as, almost as staged as the the people in the documentary, like um, 
this uh, an Aust Australian healer claims that he can cure people of their disabilities disabilities through Jesus. Emily Yates, a wheelchair user, attends a UK se session, a UK session. I didn't realise that to investigate if his claims are true. Um, so this this documentary, some somebody's had the idea. Now, my personal, after watching it, my, my discernment is it's really to pull back the curtain and say, look at this rubbish, look at this um, complete farce. And Emily's been the one asked to, you know, be the the test model to go and show that. And it it's quite... It, it does show it does it does uh, it does the truth for ser a service if you look at it from a biblically true perspective if you look at it from an ignorant perspective from the world you'll see how it's all it's a load of rubbish therefore christianity is a load of rubbish so these things do not speak for christianity even though they use the name of jesus so emily um whether whether she's doubtful, yeah. she's obviously. I don't think she believes it. So I don't think she's going to ever believe this man from the start. Um, but I I still don't believe that stopped her from being healed. She doesn't. After the documentary, she doesn't go out of the church like without her wheelchair. She remains exactly the same. And. So she she is a good test model to show that it is it was a a load of kook, a load of rubbish, a load of nonsense and staged. And I personally believe, if you'd like to watch the video and come to your own conclusions, I personally believe this bloke knows that he's what it's a sham. There's people in the audience that are stage actors and it's all a big entertainment show and they highlight the the areas where the the emotional drama is being fed along and it's like a cat you know it's like a cabaret act it's, these people pay to go and see a show and uh the people who generally want want her there who are putting their trust in this man in the name of jesus to be healed are not being healed they may feel they may get wrapped up in it and feel a bit better, but but there's no evidence of the uh, long-lasting recovery and healing, the complete healing of these people, and neither will there will, will there be until the the appearing of to a believer till the appearing of Jesus Christ. And, and I'm going to share the scriptures which show that. But I wanted to just mention the frame, how it's framed. And what I mean by that is, what is the intention behind the making of it? Is it just to reveal truth or reveal truth with an indirect jab at Christianity on top of the truth? And that's what I discerned was behind it. Whether that was the known intention, but that's kind of what it's portraying. It's destroy Christianity in the name of Jesus. I'm going to read a scripture. Um, because the behaviour in these um, places is like the, like slaying of the spirit. He, he swipes his hand around and in the name of Jesus swipes his hand around and people you know faint or go all giddy or start laughing hysterically now some of that I personally believe is just people feel go along with it and it's learned behaviour perhaps it's even demonic behaviour these people are opening themselves up to be suggestible to the kind of spiritual forces that attend this person um, but bi biblically speaking, I'm going to make a few points uh, which the word is a, the established word has uh, set down. Uh, so I'm going to read from John, the book of John, chapter 20.
Now I remember when these sort of charismatic evangelical churches um, or in the name of evangelism, you know, they, they these false uh, pastors and these false religious people always try and own what the name of uh, what, what a Christian should be, uh, like evangelist, an evangelist or the or this or that or a Baptist or, or whatever and they come in the, uh, a false a false gospel teaching they, d they don't teach about Jesus they teach about church they teach about their mission um, uh, let me read this scripture um, John 20 verse 24 I'll start Right, this is a time of um, now the healings to, to make a point um, in defence of what the Bible teaches. Now, a lot of people will argue this, um, but I think it, I, now the truth, what, how you interpret what is truth? Well, truth is how things were, how things are and how things will be truly. Uh, we don't see the truth because we can't see all things at once so we so to see the truth all at once is very hard but we can see the truth the truth is there and error is also among among that which is true truth is uh, tainted but uh, truth is separate from error and to see the truth you have to know what the truth is to be able to recognize it that therefore you have to be uh, the scripture says um, the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge uh, to repent and to receive Jesus Christ is the beginning of knowledge it's the beginning it's the foundation of all truth and then from the established truth uh, the holy word you can work out what what else is true how things really are as God as God sees them, God is um, all seeing, all things are before him from eternity to eternity. So there's not anything that goes on that he doesn't see, it's before him uh, 24 hours a day um, for every, every single moment of time that's ever been given, that God's graced this uh, life, uh, the human race with life. Um, he sees all things. Um, in the time of his ministry, uh, he he was present on the earth, and he was a witness of the miracles. Were a witness of his power, his uh, deity, his holiness, and to witness of that he'd come from the Father, and he his ministry was full of grace. As he he had, had the fullness of grace, he had the full power of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit because he was God the Son and he was on earth in the flesh and while he was on the earth he performed all these miracles and people were healed now you might, might may find that hard to comprehend you may find that hard to believe but there were people who saw these miracles and didn't believe they discredited uh, his miracles from from although they saw them they saw um, somebody coming out of the grave sick people healed people with uh, uh, lame with um, disfigured joints straightened people stood up on para you know legs that never worked people with diseases were cured people were made physically whole and spiritually whole by by the grace of Jesus Christ and um, while he called his 12 apostles the foundational pillars of the rock Jesus Christ laying down his life and uh, suffering all the sins of mankind being holy and paying the demands of the justice of a holy God overcoming hell and death and appearing resurrected and uh, 
restoring his uh, his um, body and his spirit um, back whole to how you know to perfect to, to be immortal to be resurrected from from the grave and to be uh, translated in holiness in perfection and glory and he appeared to his witnesses um, and that's what I'm going to be reading to establish that while he was on the earth people saw his miracle so if you were a believer you would see the miracles you would believe you would, how would you not believe if you were to believe in Jesus you would you would carry on believing you wouldn't be able to doubt um, and the decide all, all the the 12 apostles saw the resurrected saviour and so did the uh, many early members of the church uh, of the first Christian believers those waiting for their Messiah and that saw the Messiah come and then saw their Messiah die on the cross for the sins of all, all mankind and then be resurrected from the grave it and the joy and the wonder and the the fire and the glory of that event they witnessed it now only those people witnessed it and Jesus remained he still administered uh, for a certain time after the resurrection to um, just bolster up and strengthen up the, this, uh, the, the apostles uh, to help them get over the shock and then to uh, preach to all the world and baptise in his name for the, for the remission of sins and it was only during that period while the apostles were alive because the apostle, an apostle is somebody who has a testimony and they seal their testimony with their blood or their lives and that's what the that's what these witnesses faithful witnesses were for Christ and they are part of the foundational rock of Christianity Christ put them on the rock with him and uh, anyone after is built upon the foundation that is established now I'm going to read the scripture um, from verse 10 uh, John 10 uh, John 20 verse 24 but Thomas one of the twelve called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in, in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus the doors being shut and stood in the mist and said peace be unto you then saith he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing and Thomas answered and said unto him my Lord and my God Jesus saith unto him Thomas because thou hast seen me thou hast believed blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed <coughs> excuse me so they the early Christians the very early Christians saw Jesus now when Jesus went back to heaven on the right hand of God on, on the right hand the glory of God where he was from eternity uh, being sent from the Father to die for the sins of the world, finishing his complete victory on the cross to glorify his Father, return to heaven on the right hand. Then the gospel was preached. And today, since that day, the believers live by faith, not by sight, not in miracles, 
not in the gifts that the uh, of the Holy Spirit that were given to the early believers. Now Jesus is the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's the same forever. But that doesn't mean his works are manifest the same. Jesus can heal. Jesus can do anything. He's God. But he's orderly. He's sober. He's wise. He's long-suffering. And he requires faith, not, not sight. And so that is one point to stress. Um, and to read another scripture. I'll just go through these uh, photos. Right, so this, uh, like many of these cranks, they um, he, he even admits in, in the documentary he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't preach the gospel of repentance. He denies people the opportunity to know Jesus themselves. And he's the centre of attention. He's the main focus. And his main focus is, oh, we need your money. And the bucket goes round at the end. So these people go home unhealed. The people in the stage show stir up a frenzy. And, he, and then you get people jumping around, waving their arms, like slaying the spirit and all this awful behaviour in the name of Christianity. And it's, it's nothing to do with Christianity. It's just another, uh, you know, these crooks think, oh, people don't believe it. I'll just, I don't believe it. I'll just make a mock of it. And everyone else does, seems to think. It's all hypocrisy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my 10 pence worth. It's a good money spinner. And it plays on these people's um, desires and their need. And their, this lady, I, whether she really opened her heart to believe it, to be healed, I think she knew deep down that, because she keeps raising her eyes, looking at the cameraman, going, this is a load of rubbish, you know, what am I doing here? Um, you can see it's um, charlatans, right, so I, the, the photos aren't very good, but, but there's a brief, um, she gives a brief account of her life, and... Um, building up to the event she turns up at the event and uh, she, there's a show there's a this lady's just been he waves his hand and she collapses to the floor and there's people there to catch them because they've just been touched by the hand of god so called it's um despicable really uh there he's laying his hands and he goes and he makes all these all these noises in the name of Jesus there she's going down he waves his hand he's just swiped his hand across and then it, it clips back there's another lady she she was very she's a very good actor she comes to the front for healing they're all putting their hands up and there's people in the crowd doing healings there's people lying on the floor shivering and dancing up and down in the aisles it's a right hullabaloo uh, it's, it's not sober or orderly it's um it's quite scary really uh what am i doing press and play uh right and there's this guy he just laughs out hysterically you know, the, I'm sure you what if you'd like to watch it. If you've not seen it, it's done in 2017, and I'm not sure of his church. There's a lot of, of these bogus churches. I remember when the Billy Graham crowd come to uh, my local town, and they're all all this waving their hands around, and it's just a frenzy. And then the bucket goes round. All these people are poor, trying to make ends meet, giving to their church. And then you, and then they discover that their their pastor or their the leaders of this church are running the scam. They've got nice houses, BMWs and Mercedes, and they're all living the high life off the backs of these people's um, ignorance, really. And that's what, and sadly, that's what it is. It's down to ignorance. And I, I, I I've been caught out in these things, so I'm not. Nobody's beyond deception. Uh, even a Christian can be, uh, dis you know, almost deceived. They can be deceived and then be delivered because they, they've been saved. And then they're, they're, they'll be delivered from that error if they are looking to the Lord and looking to learn. 
So that bloke goes down hysterically. And then there's all this slaying and all the people are in the audience getting uh, stirred up for it, all clapping along and smiling and enjoying the, enjoying the show. And he's just a showman. And then it comes to her time and she... He, he does all this, puts his hand on her and she gives it a go and then she, they try and stand her up on her feet and of course she's saying, that I, I can't take it, you know, it's hurting. And then she's like, he's asking her, are you healed? And uh, she says, no, I feel it absolutely no different. And uh, he says, is there any pain? And then she says, no, but there wasn't any pain to start with. And then he... Um, she notices that he's emphasising on the failures and then he then he speaks to the audience justifying the failure saying well some people it's a slow process you know faith takes time other people it's just natural it's instant so he's got a good angle for that he his stage actors all the stage actors that come on all the people that are just vulnerably go along with it and play the showman and drink the nonsense spirits that are available to their vain imagination and they get drawn along by it so it all props up the show um, but most of it is staged and all the people that are there to give their money don't get healed and that's the bottom line it's a one big show and and of course they're all saying look at it it's a con well of course it's a con everybody can see it it's a con but there's nobody in these documentaries to well that's not what christianity teaches that's nothing to do with christianity so on it goes and then of course she she sits back down and and then the bucket goes round and it's a collection and uh, all the people get their money out so they're taken held upside down by their legs and their, all the coffers are shaken out of their pockets so it's all all about money it's all about running of course um organizations have got a function but that shouldn't be the focus because on his website it's just a donation donation donations you know if these people could generally heal they wouldn't be charging money for it and and why have a big show? Why not just go around the hospitals or and around the streets and knocking on the door or, you know, the fame of it would get out and people would be coming to you and you know, you you would you'd be swamped like Christ was swamped. You know, he had to go out into the sea into a boat to get away from the throng of people swarming him, carrying him off because they wanted him. You know, they wanted to exalt him on the throne as king. You know they they, they um, would have smothered Jesus. They would have uh, absolutely been at ants all over him like a sticky sweet. Uh, so the, these these are obviously bogus, and then it's uh, it's quite a shame. And these people are are conned. Uh, so I'll read another scripture. The Lord has already dealt with this so let's look at what the scriptures say and I'll say um, vexed by it and I, I, it's not something I'm not aware of but it's something I've been thinking about all day it's had a, quite an impression on me and it's been making me think about a lot of things that are pondering on things of the the appearance of Christianity in the world and how that's kind of changed. I'm going to speak a bit more about that in a minute. Um, our Second Peter chapter two. Uh, I'm going to read another just to clarify the what I was saying about um, John where Thomas doubted and the Lord said are oh, blessed those who believe and have not seen um, 2 Corinthians 5 just to make the point uh, 
verse <coughs> 7 for we walk by faith not by sight there's another scripture the, the just shall live by faith um, the just live by faith day to day um, so you live by you enter in through faith and then you continue it you continue on daily in faith believing and putting on that which you received when you first entered in so faith is um, live daily and it's not by sight it's not by I've never seen Jesus I never heard the voice of God I never um, had saw any miracles performed like in what I've read in the scriptures that doesn't mean I don't believe those miracles I believe in 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 the Savior who performed those miracles and I, I trusted him and I got a witness that he he's faithful and true and then I discovered that witness is faithful and true in his word therefore I I believe the miracles why wouldn't I believe the miracles I've received a faithful witness um, so we live by faith not by sight and that's really a, a simple rule of thumb to measure any genuine you know that's a, a sure red flag of a, a false teacher or a false gospel or, or a false prophet a wolf in sheep's clothing uh, teaching falsity in the name of Jesus and Jesus warned about it and second through Peter's testimony through his epistle second uh, Peter 2 this is quite um, a fearful warning it's just it's a stark warning um, I might read quite a bit of this chapter. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately bring in, privily shall bring in, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow the pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Right, hence why, they, why I wanted to title this video Destroying Christianity in the Name of Jesus or, Dis or Damn Me in the Name of Jesus or Lead Me Down to Hell in the Name of Jesus however, however I could term it it's, but it's against Christianity in these bad examples are not doing the truth any good so this is why I feel strongly and believe strongly that it's, it needs defending and it needs defending constantly uh, for people to know the truth or people to hear an alternative opinion of, you know, of what's portrayed as the truth. There is some truth in this. It's a very uh, sober account, but it's biased. Uh, there's a moderator in it who quite rightly points out the psychological behavior of what what's going on in 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 the whole scene in the whole drama and it's just one fear to show and he's just there to be the anchor man to show she's the exposee and it just goes hey look at this it's all a load of rubbish so it, that's the right that's the light, that's the lens that's put on the camera. It's got a sharp stick in it towards Jesus Christ. But people don't believe in Jesus, so they won't see that. They just see the truth of it's a load of nonsense. Well, Christians can see it's a load of nonsense. That, that's, that's a tragedy because it's not only robbing those people who believe in these people of their salvation, it's doing a disservice to the truth and putting off other people from coming and believing and discovering the truth of themselves and it's damning those people and it's reinforcing the, their judgment which is what this uh, scripture is warning about and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason whom way of truth whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of now Christ is the way of truth so it's all against him it's all against his 
his his holiness, his love. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't if the public saw a child being cruelly treated, they'd be outraged. But on, when it's Jesus, because people don't believe him, they, therefore he doesn't exist. Therefore he doesn't feel. He didn't feel anything. He didn't suffer anything. He was without feeling. Well, he's the most feeling person you could ever. You can even comprehend how em, how much empathy and understanding. He completely comprehends everything and suffered everything for all people that they may know him and have eternal life and a remission of their sins from that is the hope in Christ to be holy to be a good person forever uh, you know if you want to season the sin just for the cutting your nose off to spite your face because you don't want to believe in Jesus well once your life's up and then you're at the checkout and it's judgment day you got to pay for that at the till. And if you don't know Jesus, you're going into an eternal phase of your existence. You're created to look, to exist forever. Now, you can be created to ex exist forever and die. You'll remain in death forever. That won't mean you'll be asleep. That means your soul will be dead it won't be able to live, it won't be able to experience life, it won't be able to do anything. It'll be stuck in a terminal cul-de-sac of remorse and regret for not believe, for not escaping the place it's found itself in. And that's why Jesus died for the sinful world. That's the hope that needs to be received. Um, Life is a probation. Today is the day of our salvation. Your life, our lives, all everybody's life is a probational phase. And no one can say, oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow, I'm going to do that tomorrow. You know, you, you, got, you have to say, oh, God willing, I can hopefully get through this day. Because you do, nobody really knows when their last breath is nobody knows what's going to happen you know you only have to look at life to see if the accidents happen the random events happen the the bad events happen tragedies happen uh, nobody knows when their life their probation's over and if you haven't received jesus christ in your probation you're judged because you had a whole lifetime to know God but you choose not to know God for a season of sin and remaining in ignorance ignorance isn't going to cut it because there will be no excuse everyone will be brought back to the fact there's no escaping what Christ done on the cross if you try if the evil world is successful getting Christianity out of people's memory and kill all the Christians the Lord will raise up other Christians out, out of the soup because um, his, his, his creation testifies of his glory his word, his Old Testament all testifies of his son Jesus Christ and while there's Jewish people on the earth they'll figure it out if they're humble and they're sincere and they turn to God they will know who their Messiah is he's Jesus Christ every prophet testified of Jesus Christ so there's no excuse not to know the living God that died from a remission of sins I'm going to read on <coughs> and through cover covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment uh, now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not for if God not if God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. 
and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, con condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those are uh, those that after should live ungodly and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful deeds the lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count a pleasure, it, a, it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Boza who loved the wages of unrighteousness for money but was rebuked for his iniquity the dumbass speaking, dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet these are wells without water, clouds they are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them, who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord, a head knowledge, not a heart knowledge, and, and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, their latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to know have known the way of righteousness, then after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them, which is to believe Jesus and trust in his word, simply and love thy neighbour as thyself. But it is happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So, uh, that's quite this all-encompassing of the intentions of these of these people. Um, to actually, people who don't believe in Jesus, you know, you can have a knowledge of Jesus, but not know Jesus. So, th this person's obviously, or people like this, have obviously had a knowledge of Jesus. They know of Jesus, but they don't believe in Jesus, therefore they haven't received Jesus. And their state is worse. You know, they've come by that truth. They've been set free from an old lifestyle and, and a new new life has opened up for them. That's, that doesn't mean they're born again. That means that the knowledge of Jesus has changed their life and they're using that wrongly. So they're, they're, they're you know, they've, they've rejected it, the goodies, eternal life, and they've turned their back on it and they're making a few quid out of the name of it. That's how disgusting it is. But to the unbeliever, they don't see it and it's robbing the this people, this like like this young this lady, she you know, it she may never I pray she does, and I pray he, he repents. 
and and I pray she repents and comes to know the living God, not not by the example of these people, but by the example of those in the Word, in in recorded in the Scriptures. Um, because it's robbing the whole world of their salvation and the truth. Hence, why I wanted to um, make this uh, this short video. Um, just going to pause for a minute. Right, a short break. I'm back. Um, now, I wanted. I was walking. Um, just going to do my shopping today, and. Uh, Walking past the place where I used to work, I used to work for um, the in my in my twenties. I worked for the or a bit younger even. I worked for the council um, for uh, doing the gardens, doing the roadside shrubs and hedgerows. And um, when I worked for the council, now the person in charge, the director of all the horticultural side of, of, of the borough was very keenly um, into Britain in bloom and always they actually won it twice um, so they were very disciplined and uh, focused on all the parks all the roundabouts all the hanging baskets every, everything all the roadside stuff had to, you know it was Considering the the scale and, and the all the different parts of the town, it was quite um, a feat to actually even qual win that competition because it's quite a strict strict tight regulations to win it. Um, but all the all the work was in the council's jurisdiction when I worked there and I saw it change over as the the money was withdrawn uh, from the area so it was all privately contracted out after that but the point is that the the town where it was it covered a few towns uh, my town and the town next uh, locally next door where they were based and they had their own, they grew their own plants, they um, done all their own flower borders, you know, they had all their own machinery, they do did, they did their own repairs where, where possible. So they're all self-contained to a point. So the, the money was really for labour, not really parts, because, uh, you know, tools and equipment, obviously. But it was all done in an old traditional way. Now there's experts that work there who were qualified in certain uh, with roses, particularly because it was a big area for rose gardens and memorial gardens. Because it was uh, Aldershot, so there's a lot of memorial gardens for soldiers and the art military that come under the jurisdiction of the council to manage the public areas of remembrance and there's a lot of gardens like that with uh, that needed expert pruning and stuff like that and a lot of this stuff was grown and you know d done themselves but as the money um, diminished all the groundwork's done and then it's just passed out to a contractor who comes along and does a quick job at it and the uh, the original people that lay all the groundwork and do all the hard work disappear and then you just get people who had nothing to do with that just come along and do a job over the top of it and I was noticing today how you know because I, I know a bit about uh, a wildlife for nature that uh, a wild wood or a wild garden will choke it will die it needs that constant looking after that management and when and and you notice this in in many areas so all the groundwork's been done by the good people you can you can see this in the churches you can see this in you know so many walks of life in the NHS system in 
you know, all, all the good foundational heritage, the 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 good, the good side of the uh, of Great Britain, all the uh, commendable achievements and uh, all the fruits really from a Christian era and that, and that's the bottom line of it that's the truth of it and the discipline and the uh, I'm not saying that these are all done by Christians I'm just saying the the principles of Christianity you know uh, love thy neighbor as thyself uh, or do do things in order do establish things in order um, do things properly, you know, do things without cutting corners. Um, and this, this is how a lot of things were established, you know, by hard sweat and tears and uh, a lot of hard work. And a, and a lot and a lot of times, you know, they're spilling the people's blood in, in, in the case of, uh, you know, preserving our liberties, you know, many a times. So these things... Um, Get, get built by the right reasons. Uh, if you look at um, Christianity, it was uh, um, now from the scripture we read earlier from John 10 at Thomas, from that time, really the church went apostate because the church and state has never been a biblical principle. Um, it's completely separate. A Christian is com taught to be separate from the world, to come out of the world and its systems. Paul the Apostle taught to the royal houses of the world of his day, but he never sat round the table and um, was holding that he was um, associated with them and doing business deals with them. He was completely separate. He didn't sit in Parliament. He didn't sit on a throne. Uh, when Jesus was ministered, he was rejected of the religious crowd, the Pharisees. He was rejected by the um, government established Herod and Rome and Caesar he was spat out so Christianity from the beginning has has been separate from any world establishment if you look in the Old Testament God forbid Moses to set up any any uh, token of um, an altar with any crafted tools, it had to be just stones picked off the floor, stacked on a pile, you know, without hands, things that God had made, and my, you know, simple like that, chuck a few stones on it, and then that will be your altar to make an offering to me. Not, not, not things built up by man's hands. Now, in the Christian church, a lot of tradition has, has crept in, so from the beginning, now bearing in mind that the gospel, the rock, remains, the truth remains preserved, the scriptures remain preserved, but Christianity went apostate from the beginning, and it always had that opposition, you know, the evil trying to own it and give it a bad name. All the early Christians were murdered, and, and then somebody else held them up as them being their idols, like the Catholic Church persecuted true Christians, Rome persecuted Christians, the Catholic Church murdered hundreds and thousands, millions of Christians in the early centuries, throughout all the centuries, and the, the, they're even uh, given Christianity a bad name, dis, you know, they're not for Christianity, they're for world domination in the name of Christianity. And Christianity has become so diseased, even any goodness that was once in it has died out. It's you think of Wikipedia, you might you, you start off with good good intention people building up a knowledge base and then the evil in the world goes, oh, we can't have the truth getting out, we better corrupt it and cause division and indifference and confusion and throw other opinions in there. And then slowly it gets hijacked, it gets robbed, it gets milked down, it gets watered down. Christianity got watered down. And over the centuries, tradition creeps in and that becomes the acceptable rule of thumb. These people go looking for Jesus and they end up in, in anything with the name of Jesus. They, 
whatever direction. There's so many outlets to find yourself wandering into, so many little mouse traps, so many little cages, so many little caves and caverns. And the gospel is always being preserved. You know, the gospel's in heaven, it's preserved in the word. And if, if because people don't know the word, because there's a big hedge, a big um, fawny hedge of all this bogus Christianity, and just like what I was saying about the contract, just like I was saying about Wikipedia and in all this, even in our own heritage, how it's got undermined, how it's been hijacked by the enemy, and then how evil's been given, held up as good, like homosexuality, transgender, all this wicked abomination that people are just starting to, the new generations grow up not knowing any different, not seeing anything wrong with it. And and the evil hijacks the truth and uh, corrupts the future generations to cut that, to cut up the continuity of truth that, that's been preserved. But the, the devil can't overthrow what's done on the cross and he can't overthrow the written word in the scriptures. So no matter what these... Uh, the enemy does or whatever these devils do to uh, deceive people the truth's all always available and it's preserved in the King James Holy Bible that's why uh, the Catholic Church want the Bibles destroyed that's why uh, Adolf Hitler and the Nazis wanted all Christian churches and their new religion taught and all Bibles destroyed because it's um, the enemy of Christianity and the enemy, the main proponent of that is the Catholic Church. The Jesuit priesthood become become Anglican priests, become um, false teachers, will become Baptists, they will become uh, Protestant ministers, they will become this, that and the other just to throw in the confusion, just to throw in a lie and when people believe the lies they're brought into the bondage of it and they're damned because they've, re they've been hedged up from finding the truth in Jesus Christ you simply call upon the name of Jesus Christ in sincere faith believing and he will answer, he, that will appropriate his atonement which is eternally established, which is permanent, but only in your mortal probation. And if you look at religion, it's a bottleneck. It's, it, it crams, it, it, these one pastor systems, these one, this one, one man ministry in a, in, in a big setting like that or in a, in a church of England or a Catholic church with a priest or a reverend or a, anyone, the Lord said, "Call no, call no one master, call no man rabbi, which is teacher, master, for only one is your master, which is God." And of course, Jesus was re referring to himself, to his Father, to so only Jesus is you call rabbi or pastor or reverend or. Holy Father, there's no Holy Father on earth except through faith in Jesus Christ. He's a Holy Father. There's there's no reverence. There's no, God's not a respecter of persons. All all Christian saints are sinners, and uh, the Holy Scriptures says um, the judgment starts in the church. So and then it invites you to consider. Well, what's the end of those who aren't saved? So, judgment begins when you know the the judgment within the church begins when you appropriate the atonement when you first come to the Lord. Your judgments that's when it begins, and any transgressing after that's been dealt with through the holiness and grace of Jesus Christ, and you've received a forgiveness of sins. You're justified. But you will be you, you'll be corrected if you sin, if you fall into sin, back into your old ways. You'll be you'll be corrected. Um, but the uh, believers have not received that, so they're under judgment. And all, all these um, 
church systems are in error and damning people and the uh, they've been infiltrated and Christianity's been attacked by evil demonic people people who are against the truth because people don't believe it there's less people to defend the word and there will come a time when these people won't be around and judgment will be set it'll be set like a rock and it, the time will be a come a come upon the world and they won't realize it like like the time of Noah's ark they didn't they mocked and scoffed but once the flood came they wished they'd got in the ark it was too late and then um god is sure from the beginning it's only unbelief that keeps people from knowing these christian religions have um, church, church and state. All the all the um, main Christian bodies are dominated by the state. Any other any other organisation is being controlled and yoked and compromised by the machinations of the Catholic Church, and it's joined all these religious systems into one body this body's been infiltrated by luciferian satanic pastors jesuit pastors all deceivers some people are just deceived some people are deliberately deceivers and this deceives the people seek generally seeking hope and light and the gospel and these ignorant people, ignorance just simply means lack of knowledge. These people haven't gone to the source and this is another reason I'm doing this video is in case I, anybody looking for that truth comes across this and uh, is pointed in the right direction and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need anybody, any advocate other than him to have faith in him and call upon him in your own personal closet in your own space in your own home wherever you are wherever whatever state you f you're found in that life finds you in you you just simply call upon the lord having faith believing realizing you're a sinner and desiring to be forgiven of your sins and if you believe in him in his righteousness that he died for your sins and cleansed you from all all of your sins you will receive him you will appropriate his atonement and you will know him and you will not go to these uh, charlatans you will not be deceived by these liars um, if you look at funerals you know it's just about filthy lucre the catholic church the church of england they're all about money they're all about church they're not about jesus they're about getting you on the bus on the treadmill to start churning up the power to bring money in it to run the beast because it's a hungry beast and these these old systems are trying to revamp themselves and join hands and compromise and it's getting fractured and water, watered down and you've got this um, traditional they dominate they're like um, uh, vultures around the carcass at a funeral you know and when when somebody whenever you you know they were there the camp there when you're born they want to baptize children that's that's totally unbiblical children don't need baptizing and they're not at a state of accountability where the, they know any sin so they're not under condemnation until they know that they're sinful so they have a conscious of sin a knowledge of sin then they're under then they then they're accountable for their actions children don't need baptism and you've got all these silly traditions that have been picked up by these Christian churches. And at funerals, you know, they they get all these people crammed in a bowl in a dead end. And then they cut you, cut you up because you're grieving or you're mourning. And, and, and then they're like getting all people in, in there. It's costing a lot of money. They're all getting paid for that. All that money's getting paid going into a pocket then you have to pay the uh, funeral people then you have to pay the council everyone's got their little nest egg 
and it's all a big to get you in the bottle, shake it up, fizz it up and all people who who accept these things gonna, are going to get um, they get their emotions played on, they get fleeced and it continues because people don't know the truth so they don't know to question it so it's down to be for people who do know the truth Pe but these people are spat out of these places and the world's dominated by this disgusting example of Christianity, this 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 con and and it's obvious to the world it's a con but there's no one defending not me, there's very few defending the truth the what the gospel is which is why I'm doing this video and um, seeing these uh, these charlatans so any 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 if you ever come across um, miracles being claimed um, there's no there's no miracles today it's a, a miracle in Jesus that he saves you and forgives you for, uh, from your forgives you for of your sins and when you're resurrected when you appear before him you'll be then you'll be healed eternally and you you will put on that immortality but while you're at while it's today in this dispensation of grace you are whole you have received that as an endowment and that is to come with the groom the groom's uh, as Jesus when he was on the earth he's you know to prepare the bride for the marriage the marriage is that reunion with his people with his church and that's when his people were put on Im immortality not not now because we live by sight we don't live by sight we live by faith not by sight um, it was only the time, like I said, of his disciples that they, they had sight because Israel required a sign and Christ came to fulfil prophecy to give those signs. So he had to tick off all the prophecies. He had to show by the glorious work of his power to, the, to Israel that he was the Messiah and he ticked every box and dotted every dot and he he completed he fulfilled the law being the author of the law and uh, religion all this reli uh, uh, Paul said I robbed uh, churches all churches of wages to do you a service he's done it Paul's done a service in the gospel he dealt with all this falsity all this error from the beginning and all all all, all the saints all the early believers would have known that and all Christians will know that that's why we have the preserved word uh, so if you you're, you've come across this and you're uh, in one of those systems you you really need to get out you need to you need to go to the home base um, Christ and search the scriptures and, and make sure uh, you evaluate your own standing with Christ and come to the knowledge of what the Bible teaches and what the truth is what the truth really is not what you think the truth is or what you perceive the truth is but what the actual truth is in the word and carefully study it out and trust the Lord to teach what is being revealed from the beginning and preserved because these things are despicable they're disgusting uh, the slaying it is so vexing to watch it to, if uh, being a believer and seeing these things and and f feeling after all the people that are deceived they don't really know any different you've got these charlatans making a a they're making a mockery out of christianity making everyone's every sincere believer's heart and those people you know fighting all, every day to get the gospel out their job a lot harder and then it raises all these more false comfort called false converts and all this fuzz and then that just fractures up the truth it waters down and compartmentalizes it and fractures it which is exactly what the enemy wants to do so if you come across this and you're not a believer and you're seeking or considering that um, I hope this has uh, been edifying and this can point you in the right direction and to the, Ho to the Holy King James Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ who's a rock 
and his words like a rock it's just the living word the written word is the living word it is a rock it's a standard witness of truth and um i'm gonna close there and leave these thoughts with you in the, in in thanks to god and into praise of god and in the name of jesus christ amen